Rate of change basically study about how one quantity changes in relation to another quantity. In short, it means how one quantity is affected by another quantity, just like you, how you affect your friends or how your friend affects you. So usually we use these symbols to represent this kind of rate of change. So let's say now we have dy over dx. And y usually is the dependent variables and x is the independent variables. So what do they mean by this kind of dependent and independence? So dependent means that y will be depends on x. Whenever x changes, y will following change. This is why we mean by dependent and independent. So let us see some of the examples now. So let's say x represent the money that you save in the bank. And the most common thing in rate of change is usually we compare with the times. Let's say along the times, what happened to this quantity is what we call as the rate of change. And this is the one most common things that we always compare. So along the times, what happened to the money that is saved in the bank? So this is why we say rate of change of money saved, represented by dx over dt. So dx means what happened to your money in the bank along the time. Next, how about now we say h represent the height of u. And we know you're getting taller along the time, right? So we can say that this d h over dt is studying about the rate of change of height. So it means that what happened to your height along the time? When the time is changes, are you increases the height? Yes, definitely. So how about now we use b to represent number of books and s how smart are you is represented by your IQ. And I'm going to say that your IQ is increases when the number of books that you read increases. Basically, it means that the more number of books that you read, you are getting smarter. So we know this is rate of change, but how can we put it in? So we know your IQ is going to be depends on how many books that you read. So we can say that is your IQ is going to depends on the number of books. But IQ represent by the symbol S. So this is why we can say that is a ds over number of books represented by b so if we have db so the answer is ds over db so would you mind to tell me how many people follow you in your ig account or tiktok let's say you have zero followers in the first day but you are so famous that every single day there are 10 new people follow you so this one we are studying about the number of followers along the time so basically we know every single day increases by 10. This is why we can say that you have 10 followers per day. So how about now we have a cylinder and they tell us that the price of a cylinder increases when the height of the cylinder increases. So since this is a relation of one quantity affecting another, so we know this is rate of change. But the price is going to be depends on the height of the cylinder. So we can say that what happened to the price when the height difference, when the height changes. So we can say this one is a dp over d hash. How about now we are looking at the radius. They tell us that the volume of a cylinder is going to increase when the radius of cylinder increases. So as we know, volume is, the formula of a cylinder is pi r square hash. So indeed, this one is going to be affected by the radius. So we can say that the volume is going to change whenever the radius is changing. So how about now we are looking at the surface area of a cylinder. They tell us that the area is going to increase whenever the radius of the cylinder increase. So the surface area will be depends on the radius. So we can say that it's a dA over dr. Next, the volume of the cylinder increase when height of the cylinder increase. So the volume is depends on the height. So you can say it's a dv over d hash. Let's see how can we solve the problem of rate of change by using chain rules. So this is chain rules. Usually this kind of problems is a little bit complicated where we have not enough of information to get dy over dx straight away. This is where we need to use the chain rules. So how do we use this? Very easy. You dump this one, whatever's on top, into the first slot and the one at the bottom at the last one. 
and the one in the middle, these two must be the same. And this thing, how do we decide? We decide by seeing what kind of information that do they provide for us in the questions. So let's say they provide us with DM, I will put DM in here. Because why is it? These two will cut off in the end. So now we have, remember, the first one on top is in the first slot, and the one at the bottom is always at the last slot. You always open up two fractions whenever you want to do this kind of chain rules. And the one in the middle must be the same. Okay? So let us see how we apply in those kind of questions. So let's say we have a balloon here. You're going to pump the air into the balloon, and the radius of the balloon is increases at the rate of 2 cm per second. So when you see of red, we always think of D over DT. Okay? When you see RATE, you always think of D over DT. Like, what happened to this thing when the time is passing? Like, what happened to this quantity along the time? Since the Earth's radius is increases, so I can say that it's DR over DT. But how many cm per second? The tell us is 2 cm per second. And find the rate of change of volume of the balloon when the radius is 5 cm. So as we know, the first information that we can get from the from the question is the tell us that the radius is keep on increases. So we know the radius is increases along the time, so we can say that it's dr over dt equal to 2 cm per second. So it means that radius increases by 2 cm every second. Next, we're going to see this one. So since they are asking for the rate of change of volume, so we can use the chain rule because we cannot directly find the rate of change of volume because they didn't give it to us. So we can say that it's d of something over dt. Why? Because they say rat, you can see that red. So you should basically red, you just do d over dt. But what is the thing that is changing? Volume. So we use dv over dt. The volume is changing along the time. So like usual, we're going to dump the first one into the first slot, and this one is going to the one last one, right? So it's dv dt. But the one in the middle is another information that they're given to us. Ha! Huh. They, they could give us dr over dt, right? Can you see that? They give us dr over dt. So we are going to use dr in the middle. So this is the formula that we're going to use. So let us compute the values. So dv over dr, do we have dv over dr? Hmm, they don't give us, right? Can we find our serve? Yes. This is just by using the equation of volume and differentiate the equation of volume with respect to r. So what's the formula for volume? So since this is a sphere, we know the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. But this is just volume. Whatever we need is dv over dr. So we need to differentiate with respect to r. So like usual, by using power rules, so 3 go down. So 4 over 3 times 3 is 4 pi r and the power reduced by 1. So this is why we get 4 pi r squared. So we're done for the first one. Now we move on with this one. Do we have dr over dt? Ah, yes. We already have it, which is here, 2 cm per second. Since they said increases, so this is why it's a positive. If sometimes when they, when they say decreases, make sure you include the negative sign. So since we have everything now, we can just plug it in and find our dv over dt. So dv over dr, the one that we have found just now is 4 pi r squared, and dr over dt is positive too. But there's one more thing that is missing, right? We still have r that is the unknown. But since they tell us, the radius is 5 cm. So the radius is no longer unknown. We can just substitute the r with 5. And we just compute everything into the calculators. 4 pi bracket 5 square times 2. So let's say because they didn't provide us with pi, we can just keep the pi as the constant. So we can say it's a 200 pi cm cube per second. So basically, what do they mean? They say that the volume of the balloon is increases 200 pi cm cube every second. So let's go for another example again. So let's say an ice cube melts and its side decreases at the rate of 0 0.1 cm per second. 
Find the rate of change of the total surface area of the ice cube when the volume is 64 cm cube. So let us process one by one first. So it's an ice cube. So basically, you have the shape of a cube. And they say that the size is decreases at the rate of 0 0.1 cm per second. So it means that it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Since we don't know what is the length of this ice cube, we use x to represent it as an unknown value. So since they said it decreases, we know the length of the ice cube is decreases along the time. But how is it decreases? It decreases at the rate of 0 0.1 cm per second. So don't forget about the negative sign. And next, find the rate of change of the total surface area. So rate of change, we always use d over dt. But what is the thing is changes? They are looking at the total surface area. So let us use a to represent this total surface area. So we have dA over dt. So like usual, we dump the dA at the first slot, dt at the last slot. But what other information that we have? Ah, we have dx over dt that we can use. So dx that we're going to fill in in the middle. So once we have everything now, this is the formula that would able for us to find the dA over dt, which is what they want. So let us tidy up a little bit. So look at this first thing first. Do we have dA over dx? Mm, no. Can we find our surf? Yes. So what's the formula for total surface area? So a cube has six faces. And the area for one face is x times x, right? The area for one face is x times x is x squared. But we have six faces, so it's times six. This is why we have area is 6x squared. But they don't want the area. Instead, they want dA over dx. So basically, we just need to differentiate a with respect to x. So like usual, 2 go down, 6 times 2 is 12. And the power reduced by 1. So this is why we have 12x. And we are done for dA over dx. Let us see the second thing that we need to find, which is dx over dt. But this one we don't need to find because why? We already have the information that we jot down just now. So once we have all of the informations, we can just plug it in. So dA over dx is 12x. dx over dt, don't forget the negative sign because they say it decreases. But there's one more unknown, right? Which is the x. Do they tell us what is the x? Hmm. But they could tell us that find the rate of change of surface area when the volume is 64. So at least we have the information about the volume. So what's the formula for volume of a cube? So we know volume is 64, but volume is just the length times the breadth times the height. But since this is a cube, they have the same length for every side. So this is why it's x times x times x is x cubed. And in order to find x, we just cube root both sides. We have 4 cm is the length of the side. So now x is no longer unknown. We know it's 4 cm. So we substitute 4. So we have 12 times 4 times negative 0 0.1. We get negative 4.8 cm squared per second. So basically it means that the surface area decreases by 4.8 cm square every second. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.